Hey, hey, everybody. What's happening? I'm Chuck Nice. I am Gary O'Reilly. And this is the live version of Playing, Playing with, with Science. Science. That's yes. right. So we're here in the studio, and we just finished recording a show, or yeah. cosmic, not a Cosmic Queries, but a Playing with Science Queries uh, show about Soccer. Yes. And uh, everybody who is a fan of the show or listens to the show knows that Gary is a uh, professional soccer player. Or was. Or what? Well, once. It's like being president, man. Once you did it, you're always. You're right. always okay, I'm going with yeah, that. You're always a professional soccer player. Once you got paid, once you got your first check, from that day forward, it's like, I'm a professional soccer player. All right. So um, the cool thing is that uh, because of Facebook Live, we could actually come to you mm. and take your questions, uh, anything you wanted to know about the physics of soccer because joining us uh, via Skype is Professor Eric Goff. Yes. And he is the author of a Gold Medal Physics and a professor at uh, Lynchburg's College in Vid And University. an all-round sports guru. Oh so my God, he, yes. So you are going to get some answers from the good professor. That I can yes. assure you. Right. And, uh, yeah, Eric is, uh, Eric is a is a, just a wealth of information on any sport that we talk yeah. about. It's always a pleasure to have but him He loves on. his soccer, so he's a, he's a good guy to have on board here. Yeah, so uh, say hi to the people, Eric. Hi, everybody. Hey. <laughs> hey, Facebook. So listen, if you uh, have any questions about the physics of soccer or the science yes. of soccer or anything like that, or just you want to know what it is to do certain things as a professional soccer player, yeah. uh, you know, we, we've got it here for you. So let's start off with a, uh, a question from uh, Jeff Mueller, uh, or Mueller, one or the other. Uh, mm -hmm. Mueller. 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 You've started again, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. So uh, he says, hey, Chuck and Gary, could you talk about um, the different playing surfaces and how it impacts yeah. performance from a player's perspective? I know there are some players that basically refuse to play on turf, and FIFA certainly has a lot of regulations about this. So what's the deal okay, with so, the playing surfaces? So turf, you as in an American term, would be referred to as an artificial surface. Okay. Right. So the old school, the first generation turfs, were some green plastic laid down on concrete. And when that ball would hit the surface, mm -hmm. it would just bounce and keep going and going and going. And it was a horrible thing to play on. You had ankle, knee, back problems because the surface was so unforgiving. Now you have fourth generation surfaces and they are far more true towards the natural surface of grass. So uh, you would always look to play on, an, on a very good grass surface. But I think the professor, I'll bring you in here, the new structure of playing surface is, is, is it's a feat of engineering, is it not now? It, it is, and it's getting much more uh, to simulate grass than it's ever been before. Uh, it's unfortunate, though, that in 2015, the Women's World Cup in Canada uh, had to be played entirely on a turf, and the, the players hated it. They were arguing that you know the men would never have played on a surface like that. Uh, leg injuries, there's less give, and it's hot. I mean, they were yes. reading 120 degrees on some of those surfaces. It's very, very hot. Yeah, see, the thing is, from the, from a player's point of view, when the surface is that hot, you are going to get stress through the footwear, into the foot, blisters, damage, all sorts of things. So it's 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 you play on it because, in the end, it's the same for both teams. Wow. But you'd rather not. You'd rather have that game take place on a natural grass surface, that's for sure. Cool. Hey, let's move on to, uh, uh, oh, by the way, um, Jeff Mueller uh, said to me, uh, uh, it's not like I ever heard that joke before about my name, the Mueller. So sorry about that, Jeff. No worries. Uh, here's, um, let's see, Daniel Cavanaugh says this. How much money are you guys taking from uh, uh, whatever? I don't even know what that means. Uh, no, David Rioja wants to know this. Bending the ball, how as how is it done? And here's here's what I love about this. What effect does it have on the point of view of the goalie? All right, so, Professor, you break down the physics, then I can break down the point of view of what it's like to be on the receiving end of a free kick from a player's point of view. So if, if we do have a little video, I mean, the, the, the ball is going to be spinning, uh, and you get this lovely banana kick filled with whipped air, and the air is going to be whipped off the back, uh, as we talked about in the previous show, uh, 
much like a boat rudder is going to deflect water. So when the ball comes off spinning, it's going to deflect the air off in one direction, and Newton's third law says the air has got to push on the ball in the other direction. So uh, you get this beautiful bending banana kick, and the uh, the goalkeeper is, of course, going to see the ball coming off the boot, and it's going to start curving. So the goalkeeper may try to pick up a little bit of spin in anticipation of which way to move. So, Chuck, your favorite phrase of our previous show, drag crisis. Drag crisis. Absolutely. Yeah. So from, from a goalkeeper... This is a crisis, girl! Okay. Yes. Right. Got that <laughs> off his chest. That's good. Um, from the goalkeeper's point of view, if you've got a free kick taken and the curve is so extreme... The goalkeeper might feel that that ball is going to travel in a straight line, but when it cuts back late, he might be fooled by it. He might then, the, the pace of the ball might diminish towards the end dramatically, or it might continue. So the goalkeeper is all about placement from a free kick. He'll hope the wall, if he's put a wall up, does his job for him. But if it doesn't, he's going to get beaten by pace and by the spin rate on the ball, which then moves it into a place that he cannot reach. Excellent. Cool. Um, okay, uh, here's Cody uh, uh, McIntyre. Says, why do more soccer players get concussions than football players? And uh, maybe you guys can talk about Ooh. that. Uh, Professor, have you got a thought on that? Well, there, there are a lot of headers in the game, uh, so yeah. they're getting a lot of contact. Uh, they're not wearing helmets, of course. Mm -hmm. um, you might get a ball coming in about 50 miles an hour, and if your head uh, is not prepared for it, if you're getting hit with the ball and you're not bracing yourself or it's not hitting your head in the, the ideal spot kind of at the top of the, the, the forehead up here, um, if it's hitting maybe on the side, if, you're, if your head can move a cup an inch or two, uh, this collision is going to take place in you know hundredths of a second. So you might have something close to 50 Gs of acceleration on your head, and anything close to there or even greater is going to cause a concussion. Yeah. The other wow. thing is when you jump to head a ball, you invariably aren't jumping alone. Someone is going to compete with you, and that allows for a potential for clashing of heads. From my own experience, I can viciously attack an opponent's elbow with my nose, oh. and that, <laughs> that happens, and, uh, yeah, things go wrong from there. So there, that's why possibly, um, from the point of view of numerics, I don't know whether one is greater than the other from football to soccer, but there are points where you will find collisions happening and possible concussions coming out of it. Wow. All right. I lost uh, this person's question, but I believe his name is Chin Zhang Ang, and right. uh, he wants to know Bernoulli's um, principle. Can you explain that, Professor, and how does it uh, um, apply to uh, soccer? So uh, Bernoulli's principle is sometimes used uh, erroneously to explain the Magnus effect. Uh, the idea is that you need a, uh, a laminar flow, a uh, in lossless energy flow of air uh, going around an object where you get a high pressure on one side and low pressure on another. And if I just take two pieces of paper together like this and I blow between them, they come together. And the idea is that I'm creating lower pressure in the middle where there's a high speed of air and a small pressure on the outside where there's low speed. And that d pressure difference leads to a uh, force on the paper. Uh, the Magnus force is more about the way in which the boundary layer of air is shed off of the ball. It, it does have a similar explanation to the Bernoulli effect, though. Professor, how cool was that demonstration with two pieces of paper? <laughs> that was everything. I mean, that's <clears> fabulous. So, okay, so you've got this pressure divide, and that's, again, the sort of thing where, with just basically any projectile we see in sport from a baseball to a soccer ball. Well, and you know it in your car. If you get too close to a big uh, tractor trailer, you feel a little bit of a pull toward the tractor trailer because there's an air rushing between the two of you uh, that's creating a low pressure zone. Uh, in tornadoes and hurricanes, you see roofs get blown upward because the pressure in the house where the speed of the air is essentially zero, uh, you have a large pressure inside and a small pressure outside. There you go. That's All it. right, one last question, then we got to wrap things up. Right. Robert Williams wants to know this. How much impact does the shoe a player wears have on 
all of the things that we're talking about. So how important mm. is the soccer shoe or what you guys, guys call the boot? Yes, we do. Yes. Uh, it's it's very important. And the, the accuracy in which the players are kicking, uh, I think Gary had talked about kicking on the uh, where the laces are. I mean, you're going to get a lot more accuracy if you can put a little bit more of the boot on it than just a straight toe kick. Uh, it'd be analogous to using a putter in golf. I mean, you're always going to kick on that wide open face you're never mm. going to turn it 90 degrees and kick on the point uh you know on the on the golf ball when you're putting so uh the stud length is also important uh depending on the type of surface you're playing the yes. type of game you're playing how quickly you want to run stop uh you know the players are going to be selecting their their stud length and that's that's an important part of engineering science right now it's an important part of everything professor stud length is my life okay oh, um <laughs> <laughs> did we did we did we did we stream off course there? Hey, listen. Um, did I set that on the T for you? Yes, or? you, you did, did. Yeah, friend. yeah. He's just told, like I'm telling you, like a big giant grapefruit yeah. coming down the plate. Yeah, that um, was an empty net, by the way, Professor Chuck's <laughs> yeah, just hammered one. that straight I in. I couldn't help it. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, yes, yeah, not a problem. <laughs> hey, listen. You know why we do this? Because we want you to know that uh, uh, we have new episodes every Wednesday yes. night of uh, Playing with Science happening on TuneIn, and so make sure you check us out for all the episodes on TuneIn.com slash playing with science. Yes. That's TuneIn.com slash playing, playing, playing with, with science. science. Yes. And it's every sport that we get into, not just soccer. Yeah. And if you love science and you love sports, then this is the place for you. And let Welcome us know home. if you want a subject addressed. We're at your That's service. Right. Anything you want to talk yeah. about, we are game to do it because we learn sure. just as long. Just, we learn, write a song. We learn right along you as you learn, okay? What he said, only <laughs> different. <laughs> hey, guys, until <laughs> next time, I'm Chuck Nice. I am Gary O'Reilly. And this is Playing, Playing With Science. Science.